Hello, everybody. My name is Theo Bennett, and I'm one of the tutors here at MCAT Self Prep. I took the MCAT back in May of 2019, and I scored a perfect 528. And so I'm here to give you as much advice as I can, um, because I you know, spent hundreds of hours trying to understand both the MCAT content material and also the AMC test-taking psychology. Uh, and so I'm just trying to give back and help you, you know, really reach your maximum potential when it comes to the MCAT. Today, we're going to be talking about how to start studying for the MCAT. When it comes to starting to study for the MCAT, you really need to ask yourself three questions. The first question is when to take the MCAT. The second question is, should I start with a prep company or should I study the content on my own? And then the third question is, should I get a tutor or should I learn how to test take on my own? The answer to those three questions are going to be different for every single person. And so you need to figure out what your priorities are, how much you're willing to sacrifice for the MCAT, and how you're going to learn the most effectively. When it comes to trying to decide when you're going to take the MCAT, I would really think about two big buckets where you could fall into. The first bucket is kind of the more classical approach when it comes to the MCAT. Um, it's a tad bit riskier, but I would say it gives you the best shot at maximizing your score. Um, and that is to take the MCAT in the year that you apply. Um, and specifically, I would try to think about taking the MCAT between March and the end of May. Uh, really, I think June, the year that you apply, is, is the latest that you could take it. Um, and I would try to advise against it, but I think it's certainly still possible. If you're gonna try and take the MCAT in the year that you apply, you have to think about whether you want to have your score back before you apply to schools or be able to apply without a score but still get in uh, as early as possible. If you wanna have your score back by the time you apply for medical school, you wanna take the MCAT before May. Uh, it takes about a month to process your scores. Again, COVID may change this uh, because in the year 2020, processing times have been reduced down to only two weeks but I would anticipate that they'll go back up to uh, about a month after COVID conditions are over. By taking it uh, the year that you apply, you're really maximizing the amount of science knowledge that you can accrue. With the small exception of whether you're on a gap year or not, typically if you take it in the year that you apply, this is either as a junior uh, in college or as a senior in college, if you wanna take only one gap year. In both of those cases, you will have just taken science classes and ideally be finished with all of your prerequisites. Uh, this will allow you to be able to use the MCAT content study time as more of a review as opposed to teaching it yourself uh, for the first time. If you take the MCAT in May, what you can do is you can apply to AMCAS, ACOMIS, or TDMAS uh, without an MCAT score. So what you'll do is you'll take the exam. Um, I personally took it May 23rd. Um, so I applied to AMCAS June 1st. And so I applied not knowing my score. Again, we said that it takes about a month for you to get your score back. And so I was planning on receiving my score about June 23rd. So I applied to AMCAS June 1st, and then I waited three weeks until I received my score back. But what happens is the time that it takes to process your AMCAS application also takes about a month. And so for me, it took them about two weeks to process. So they were done processing my application on about June 14th. But then what happens is they'll hold your application and release it to all of the medical schools on July 1st. So I had applied to AMCAS and then I had been processed. Um, and then on June 23rd, I received my MCAT score back. And prior to this, I had really built two lists of schools that I was going to apply to. When I applied to AMCAS, I only applied to one school. I just applied to a state school that I knew I was going to uh, consider attending, whether I got a good score on the MCAT or not. I was perfectly fine applying no matter what. And so then what I did is once I got my score back, um, after my application had been processed, I had two lists of schools. One list was if I got a score below a given score that I had in my head. And the other list was for if I scored above that score. So I had two lists and I was all ready to apply to all the schools that I wanted to. Again, I got a 528, so that was way above what I thought I was gonna get. And so I applied to that upper list of schools and then I quickly added those schools and it, that process took about 30 seconds. Now, the key thing here is 
from the perspective of those schools that I added on June 23rd, it was just as if I applied to those schools on June 1st. They were going to get my application the same day on that July 1st deadline, whether I applied June 1st or June 23rd. Uh, and so what I could do is I could hedge my bets and without knowing my score, I could have a list that I was happy with. This, at least for me, gave me more time to study full-time for the MCAT after my finals were done. But again, it's a little bit riskier because if you score way below you were expecting, you may run the risk of having to reapply maybe the following year or retake the exam. Uh, it's just a little bit crazier during that time. But again, if you only apply to one school at the, at the outset, you're only back about 200 bucks. The other big bucket that people can fall into is taking the exam at the end of the summer, the year before they apply. So this would be in September or in August, uh, the year before you anticipate applying. So that way you have about eight or nine months to draft your personal statement, your activities, um, and all of that with the foreknowledge of what your MCAT score was. The risk of this is that you're applying earlier in your academic career. So potentially you might have to teach yourself biochem or something like that. But the benefit of this is that way you have a little bit more stability and a longer time horizon just in case you need to retake the MCAT. That would sort of be my blanket recommendation to most of the students that I tutor is to either take the MCAT in August or September or to take the MCAT in May, April, or March. So the second question that you need to ask yourself is, are you going to study with a prep company or are you going to get through the content on your own? Basically, prep companies are going to charge you between $1,000 and three or $4,000 to go through the, their own videos or their books that they've created uh, to teach you the content for the MCAT. I'm pretty biased when it comes to this question because all those prep companies won't tell you that the AAMC paid Khan Academy to make the official prep videos for free. So all of those are easily accessible on YouTube. You don't need to pay a dime. Uh, and I loved it. I was able to get through all of the content um, for free. And if anything, it was better because it came more directly from the source itself, right? The, the Khan Academy worked directly with the, the AAMC, whereas prep companies are kind of playing this game of telephone where they're trying to understand what's on the MCAT exam by having other tutors and people that they have hired to go and take the MCAT exam and kind of reverse engineer what they are expected to cover. So the most expensive option is going to be working with those big name prep companies, and that's going to run you about $3,000. The middle option is to maybe just buy prep books. Those are gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars. Uh, and again, I think if you really like reading textbooks, that's a really good option. And then the cheapest option is to uh, use our free MCAT e-course um, again, you don't have to use it through MCAT self prep, but we've just organized all of the Khan Academy videos and other videos into nice, easy playlists that you can work through. This is what I did and I scored a perfect score on the MCAT. And so obviously I think it works great. The last question is whether you want to work with an MCAT tutor or whether you want to learn the test taking strategies alone. And even though I'm a tutor for the MCAT myself, I'm actually not super biased when it comes to this question. I think that some people can really benefit from tutors, whereas other people really don't need tutors. To answer this question, it really helps to do a lot of introspection and figure out what type of learner you are. Are you someone who really benefits from going to office hours with the TA or with your professor? Uh, are you someone who really needs some structure and someone to give you that sense of accountability? Or are you someone who is kind of more self-motivated and willing to study for long hours by yourself? The question is not really, are you driven, but how you learn best. And again, a lot of people are going to kind of fall somewhere in the middle. So ultimately you need to make that decision yourself. If you decide that you need someone for accountability or someone to help teach you test taking strategies, I would honestly consider hiring a tutor. This test is very expensive. Um, and so you don't want to take it twice, especially because the opportunity cost of waiting a year to go to medical school is ginormous, right? It's giving up potentially a year of a physician's salary, which is much more than the cost of tutoring. So if you feel like you potentially could use tutoring, I would consider doing it from the outset just because you don't want to take this exam twice. I'm not going to really vouch for a specific company. Uh, I mean, obviously I trust MCAT self prep because I tutor for them. 
Uh, but I've actually tutored for five, I think, different companies uh, for the MCAT. And I've left all those previous companies due to ethical reasons. I felt like they were almost preying on students' insecurities. And I just didn't feel comfortable as a tutor being a part of that kind of predatory business practices. So I can definitely vouch for MCAT self prep's intentions, and I've loved working with them, uh, but you need to find out what works for you. I would say as a general rule of thumb, the big name prep companies are going to be the most expensive when it comes to a hourly rate. Uh, smaller and kind of more nimble companies are going to definitely charge you less when it comes to an hourly rate. Uh, but ultimately, you just need to find a tutor that works for you. I think that's the most important piece. And really, you need to think about where you want to score in terms of a goal score and judge your tutor based on that, right? If you're trying to score in the 100th percentile and you're working with a tutor um, that some big prep, prep company hired because they scored over a 515, that's probably not going to work because ultimately, you're going to know more about the MCAT than they knew about the MCAT by the time you take the exam. And so you... Whatever company you end up deciding to work with, make sure that their tutor that they've assigned you with had scored higher than your ultimate goal score. Again, you don't need someone who scored you know, a perfect score like me. Um, I really think that in a lot of ways that's overkill. Uh, but I think that you just need to find someone that has scored higher than, than you want to ultimately score. So all that being said, in addition to thinking about the pricing, also think about the quality of the tutors that that company hires. Once you decide on a company, I would think about starting off with less tutoring sessions um, just to see if they are truly adding value for you. And so if they allow you to choose between 5, 10, 20, 40, 100 hours, I would think about starting in that you know, 5 to 20 hour range just to A, see if that fit is good for you, um, but also forcing the tutor to really give you as much value as they can in a compressed time frame. Right? If you have a tutor that is willing to sort of teach a man to fish as opposed to um, just feeding you fish, um, and what I mean by that is they're teaching you how to learn or teaching you how to take the test as opposed to just holding your hand through the process, that's going to be the best uh, bang for your buck, so to speak, when it comes to tutoring for the MCAT. So again, your most expensive tier is going to be the big prep companies, and that'll cost you a couple thousand dollars. Uh, and certainly that's going to cost you more money per hour than another company would charge you. The middle tier is going to be the smaller companies like MCAT self prep, where our rates started about, I think it's $150 an hour. Uh, but, but ultimately those smaller companies are trying to hire higher quality tutors and charge you less per hour. So that's, if I were getting tutoring, that's probably where I would look. Uh, and then your cheapest option, which is a great option is to look on Reddit forums or Facebook groups where you can get that same level of mentorship and camaraderie and accountability uh, through social interactions that comes, but that way you can get it for free. There are plenty of people on Reddit and on Facebook who are more than happy to answer your content questions that you have um, and give you specific guidance, and they'll do it for free. I am very active on Reddit and I and also on Facebook, and I love answering students' questions just because I like helping them. And so if you can find people that you can trust on there, I would also go that route as well too. Again, none of this is mutually exclusive, but just make sure that the company or the friends that you're leaning on are high quality and they know what they're talking about because you do not want to end up in a situation that where you're stuck with a tutor or with a study buddy that is bringing you down or potentially even feeding you false information. Again, I hope you found this video to be helpful. Uh, and if you have any more questions uh, about specifics, feel free to use the link in the description below to sign up for a free consultation where we can talk one-on-one -on -one and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, again, my name is Theo Bennett. I'm one of the tutors here at MCAT Self Prep, and we are committed to giving students who are studying for the MCAT as much information and as many study strategies and also test-taking strategies as possible literally for free. Uh, that's why we've created the free e-course and so many other free resources to reduce the stress and the financial burden and uh, the insecurities that you may be feeling when it comes to taking the MCAT. Uh, it's a very difficult test and it requires a lot of sacrifice, but by no means is it impossible and we're here to help.